this call meeting of the Cleveland County Board of Education in order for express purpose to get us started on our superintendent search. We're happy to have with us tonight you guys, Schaefer, and her staff here. I'll just turn it over to them and take the floor and go with them. Great. Good evening, everyone. Lovely to see all of you. I think I know all of you. Um, we really appreciate your uh, confidence in choosing us to help you with your superintendent search. Um, as you know, we do this statewide and uh, we've sent you materials that uh, describes our services. Um, and we appreciate you also letting me join my uh, conference call last week when the weather was threatening and that seemed to work very well. I'm glad to be here person to see all of you. We really look forward to working with you. Obviously, this is the most important task the board has, is to make sure that they have a very strong leader to help with the school system. And that is a very solid responsibility of the board. Um, we uh, do this, as you know, we are the School Board Association. I'm Allison Schaefer, for those of the audience who don't know who I am. I'm the legal counsel and director of policy services for the North Carolina School Board Association. And um, I have been doing this I've been with the School Board Association since, uh, for 16 years, um, and we have now provided services to 75 of the boards in North Carolina, about 115. Um, we did actually work with the Shelby Board, with Mr. Shelby Board, years ago, um, also, and then I worked with Cleveland County before as well. Uh, so we're pleased that you were asked us to do that. With me is Scott Murray. He's a staff attorney with my office. Uh, the way we work our superintendent search service, there's me and one other attorney who work uh, with the board. Scott will be helping with a lot of paperwork, communicating with your board assistant to get things like surveys up and all that kind of thing. So Scott will be sending out emails and helping me with that. I'll be as many at many of the, as many of the meetings as I can be. I have Scott to help me with all that to the extent we can um, go back and forth. So um, I wanted to bring him tonight so you can meet him. He's worked on a lot of searches with me in the last years you've been in this organization? Three years. Um, he's a great young man. He actually has a, um, he's I've got a law degree from UNC, very avid basketball fan. And um, he also um, was a teacher before he went back to law school. So he taught for several years in Guilford County and Rockingham County where he's from. So, so you know, he's got education background as well. Um, so we're here tonight to get you started with your search process. We have provided the board electronically and also by paper copy. Um, a copy of the materials that we need for you to look at tonight in order to get the process started. I know the board is anxious to make sure you have someone in place by the time Dr. Boyles is, leaves at the end of June, and so we have tried to do a, a timeline that will follow that. Yes, sir? I believe Allison is already on board Dr. Stu, is it not? Um, you will, yeah, you will loaded it yet, yes, your, your staff loaded it already, so it is on board Dr. <laughs> So it's available for the public there. We have paper copies. We've got it up now. So hopefully everyone who wants to see it can see it. Um, these are public documents. Uh, this, is, this is about process. So this is a public meeting. Not all the meetings that you conduct uh, in your superintendent search are going to be public meetings because by law in North Carolina, information about candidates and, um, and who the candidates are and information they submit is all confidential under the law. And in order to discuss the candidates, you go, you go into closed session, and that's that's a confidential meeting. Um, again, I think it's um, I think you all know this, but it's a criminal offense to release confidential information about candidates um, if it's not author if you're not authorized by law to do so, or the candidate has not specifically given permission. And we'll talk about that. So we're going to talk about the process and the way we recommend it, given our restrictions in the law, how you can involve your public and your community. Um, in looking at your um, who, who your next superintendent will be without violating the, the legal restrictions that we have. So we're going to talk about that tonight as well. Okay, so what we need to do to get you started is get some documents done. We need to approve uh, an application time or an application deadline, and then we're going to talk about that. And I have these documents in the right order, so we're going to go through them one by one, and I'm going to tell you what I need uh, you to approve. Let me reiterate, I think what I said last week, which is this is your process. I want you all to be comfortable with it. I want you to feel like it's the way you want it. We are here to help say this has worked well in the past. This is not, you might want to consider this if you want to do something a little different. We're here to help with the process. And I'm going to reiterate another thing I said last week. We're very respectful of the board's role. We are the school boards association and we are here to serve school boards. 
and we are here to make sure that the process is smooth, but we do not make decisions on your behalf. You are the decision makers by law. You decide who you want to interview. We do not screen. We help get you great candidates and great information about the candidates so you have the information that you need because under the law, you're the decision makers and no one else. Okay? Just want to be real clear about that. Okay. Um, so the first thing we need to talk about is uh, a draft timeline. We discussed this a little bit last week. I think you guys asked us to tighten it up a little bit so that we could have somebody in place by July 1. So what we've come up with is a, um, if we start advertising tomorrow, which is our goal, uh, we will take documents back tomorrow and um, we will get them uh, going. Uh, we need, we, we prefer the minimum of six weeks and that's kind of what we have here is this, of six weeks of advertising so that we can get the word out. It takes a while to get the word out. The information goes out for a while and then it'll kind of start coming back in as people start to apply. People will call, people will find out about it. Um, so we have a target application deadline of April 2nd. I'm going to go through a little bit the timeline, but I want to be clear that the only thing on this timeline that actually needs board approval is the application deadline because you have to advertise that. The rest is just target dates, flexibility, so that you have a little bit of flexibility. For instance, if you can't meet, um, you know, uh, on April 28th, but you want to go to May 1st, you can do that. Um, so we've given you some ranges of dates so that you have some targets. And the idea here is just to lay out the steps so everyone's aware of what those steps will be, and also to give you some idea of how long they should take. So what we would ask for, Mr. Chairman, is approval of April 2nd um, deadline for an application based on the feedback I got from the board last week about what you would like to do. Is that, and if there's any discussion, please let me know. The longer you can advertise, the more the word will get out there. I'll start the discussion a little bit uh, and go in advance, but we have to, we'll have to do something, maybe not then, but April 21st is Easter Monday. Okay. And that's going to be in what may be partially left of spring vacation. Okay. Well, we certainly can work with that. Is the week before um, a, an, a week where everyone's in town? So I'm going to pull up my calendar here. Um, I, I, I've looked at it. Not that you all have looked at it too, but and I, I did not know you wanted uh, six weeks, but actually that, that's just 40 days through April 2nd. It's close to I, six weeks. I, I, I'm just wondering if, if we should go back to March 31st and, and then we could move April 21st back to the previous week and maybe even take less time. It seems to me that we don't need 12 days to go over the application packets. Well, uh, we could move the application deadline I would, I would suggest that we just try to limit the amount of time that you all look at this, the information. We can talk about how that's going to come down to you. Um, but we could, we could work with having the deadline, I mean, having the meeting on um, the 16th. Would that, 16th. Or that's a Wednesday. Would that work for folks? Or the 17th? But that's right before Good Friday, so that may not be a good day. The, the 17th is a Thursday, but that's Good Friday is the next day, so that may not be a good day. I'm assuming you're not available on the 14th or 15th. Oh, sure, we could do that, but then we would have to move the application deadline back. So that's fine, we can do that. Um, I just want to make sure you have enough time. So if you would prefer. are going to need some time to compile, I mean, to make copies and get them to us. So yes. That's included in the between April 2nd and whenever. We have so, a week, so. We don't want to cut ourselves too short for y'all as well as for us because we had a staff. So that whole week of April 21st is out because that's your spring break week is out I'm here. So if we can if we can set a date from that meeting as late as possible, the week of the 14th. Is that the week? Is that spring break week? I think so. That's good. That, that's Are people out of town or something? Because <clears throat> Donnie, what did you say? What are the dates? The 18th and the 21st through the 25th. Right. 
I understand. They were short down. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. The, the original spring break dates are 21st through the 25th. Right. Friday the yes. Friday the So your question is, are the board members going to be here? Because this is a closed session meeting, so it's really just going to be the board members. Is, there, is anyone going to be out of town that week on the 21st? You're all week. Richards, the twenty fourth, Thursday, twenty fourth, Thursday. I mean, I mean, I'm Well, now wait, if you were asking, when we come the seventeenth. No, no, the original date is the twenty first. You raised the issue about it being spring break, but I think uh, Cheryl was asking if it's is that if it's okay for the rest of the board. Then it just needs to be y'all and us. It doesn't need to be anybody. You, what you were asking, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, is, is the if nobody's going to be gone. Can we go ahead and do it on the 21st? Uh, and it's a closed meeting, right? Yes, it's a closed session. Okay. Right, so we could have it. We wouldn't have not enough school to have it. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. We could have it someplace else. Can I suggest that because the 21st is still a holiday, right? It's Easter okay. Monday. It's Easter Monday. Could we do it on Tuesday night then instead? My original question was, we may not be having spring break this year because of the weather. So unless somebody here, are y'all going to be out of town? No, uh, no, I could be here exactly. Am I, am I seeing Mr. Mr. Tuesday, I mean, if Monday, Tuesday, I'll be here, so that's not. I mean, if it's a closed session, then. I really kind of like the week before better, uh, but if it puts a... Well, I'm just worried. We're worried about trying to make sure we have enough time to advertise. So if that if the two, that Tuesday evening works, that would be fine. We made it the 22nd to the 21st, but we wouldn't have changed application. Oh, no. No, we didn't. That'll give you that extra week of getting applications in. I'm worried that they're already cutting that kind of short, so okay. we can keep so it there. All right, anything else about the proposed calendar that is a cause of concern as looking upon it right now? We're not going to cut ourselves short by getting everything in such a hurry about getting the best out of the Um, You know, the ideal is eight weeks, but we found that six weeks you get a good pool. And what we will do is we will get on the phone and, and we will get this word out starting tomorrow and we'll get it out as aggressively as possible. So we will work to make sure everyone who wants to know knows. And we'll be making some phone calls about to people that we know might be interested. So I think we'll be fine. Allison, on the, the second page that you have included, the uh, very first thing, website advertising, 30 days, $525, or uh, 60 days, $740. I'm assuming we'll go with the 30 or can we go with 45 um, they, can, they will not split it up, so I would suggest that 30 would be sufficient. Okay. We'll do it at the beginning so that um, folks can hear about it, and then the rest of the time they'll have to get the application ready, and we'll talk about that. Okay. Okay. So are the rest of the dates on this proposed timeline? Again, those are not set in stone, except the application deadline. So the only thing we actually need an approval from uh, or for is the application deadline, because we have to advertise that so people know when the due date is. I'm sorry, Chair. No, I, I was just second guessing myself. So if if for some reason we needed to change that April 22nd date, that's not it's not, it's not set in stone. stone. It's a target date. So if somebody finds that they have to be out of town, we can change it. But it's good to have these on your calendar. So it's so the more you have notice that something's going to be on the calendar, the better. You'll notice when we say meetings for first interviews, we have a, a week there. Um, so that won't be the whole week, but we just didn't put that as a range. Okay. All right, any other questions? Okay. Well, I think we have to have a motion for that day, right? Yes. Not for the whole time, not just that day. Just for the application to be due in April 2nd. What's the plate? Do I hear the motion? There's a motion on the floor. I'll make a motion to accept the application deadline. Seconded that we accept April 2nd's application deadline. Uh, any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you. The next
next document is the um, proposed advertisement. In order not to slow, slow you all down, we, we, we believe that it's best to develop a profile after you've had a chance to have some community input, but you go ahead and advertise the vacancy now. Um, so we have a more generic, a, a broader kind of uh, advertisement that we recommend. We have pulled out some information about your school district. Um, but I wanted to sort of go through this paragraph by paragraph and make sure that this says what you want about your school district and your community. We pulled the information off the, the Chamber of Commerce website, I believe, about the community. Is that right? Uh, several websites that are listed. Several websites that are listed. And, um, and then we, we summarized what we um, thought was accurate about your school district. But sometimes things change based on what's on the internet. So um, the first paragraph talks about the fact that you're seeking a superintendent. Um, and that they must, a candidate must either meet the legal requirements to be licensed or be qualified to serve under the State Board of Education's alternative guidelines. That's the law. They either have to be qualified one or the other. So that's pretty much a statement of what's required. The second, the next part there though is um, what you prefer. Central office and building level experience are preferred. We suggest you don't say are required because you don't want to knock out a, a non-traditional candidate that might be very appealing to you, that might not have that. But just to say, we'd like to see somebody who's been a principal or assistant or assistant principal and has also had some central office experience. But you can change that, um, adopt, or you could say superintendent experience is preferred. But again, I think that you need to be as broad as possible to attract the most candidates. So I think that's probably a fair statement. Um, a doctorate degree or progress for a doctorate degree is preferred but not required. Again, that's an optional statement. And then the last sentence is, the person will be required to live in Cleveland County. That is also the law. Okay, so anything that you want to, anyone wants to change there, are you satisfied with the way it currently reads? If, if we struck the sentence about the doctoral degree, is that limited? I, I would assume most candidates that are going to apply for this position have a doctoral degree or, or are working on it. You're not required to have a doctorate degree to be a superintendent in North Carolina, or even to get licensed. You have to have a six year certificate, which is basically. Um, work toward a doctorate degree. Oh, the six-year certificate is, is the coursework, but not the dissertation. Mm -hmm. So it's not really required. It's just a question whether the board prefers that and states it as a preference, or would you rather just take the sentence out and find the, I mean, it's fine to do either way. It's a question of y'all's preference. I'm likely to leave it in. I'm going to do that just for this. I'm going to I'll, I'll be more targeted, but for here, I want to make sure that this is saying what you all want to say. We don't have to vote on it. I just we can go through and make any changes, and then we can vote at the end if that's okay. Not the day there's April second. Right. What's the pleasure? She won't need the, she doesn't need it. I don't need it. I thought you needed much. Not until the end of the document, but I'm just trying to get feedback right now. We can do it that way. So, and it, so I'm hearing everybody's happy with, with leaving it in. It's a preference, not a mandate. So um, it just says, okay. Um, the next group of, of items is just kind of a general idea of what a superintendent does. So, you know, must demonstrate ability and success in visionary leadership, educational leadership, curriculum instruction, goal setting, et cetera. Um, and is there anything, is that okay? Do you want to add anything or take anything away that you're not really thinking? needs to be part of the superintendent's job, um, and, or, and you want to see, you, what you're saying to folks is we want to see what you've done that will demonstrate your ability in this area. Are you okay with that? Okay. Again. Anybody, uh, yeah. If anybody's not, speak up. Yeah, I, I saw uh, in, uh, in something about previous reading, uh, maybe that was in one of the surveys that talked about Fostering community and or government intergovernmental relationships is the way it's worded in this particular document. Strong communication and effective team building, visibility and community activities. I think the community is woven in there. So everybody thinks that's generally and covers it generally enough that we have no problem with it. It's basically the duties of a superintendent. You know, we'd like to see you demonstrate your ability. Um, the next one it describes your school district and your board. 
Um, we want to make sure that that is correct, um, that that's what you want to say about your school system. Um, that comes in part from your website, and we want to make sure that that is what you want people to know as in their first glance at your school district. We have a different number now. It's uh, 15,300. We said over 15,300. So is, yeah. is, that, that, is that accurate? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's close. Okay. Um, really, you just, people want to know, some folks are attracted to a district of a certain size or feel comfortable in a district of a certain size, so you want to just give them a ballpark, so it's not essential that it be exact. Okay? All right, um, so everybody's good with that paragraph, and the last paragraph describes your county. What do you want people to know about your county? Um, where it's located is important for people to understand, and some good things about your county, uh, the fact that it's close to uh, Charlotte for airport reasons and, and what's nearby, but also what you can do here. And so um, this came from the websites that Scott spent some time looking at. Sounds like a lovely place. We've got the World Series here. The, the World Series? We have what? Baseball. Not really. Not really. Not really. Not really. Would you like to have the Rose Crooks? <laughs> You can visit artists and galleries and historical sites, so we're good. Okay, so we don't need to add the World Series. We also do provide them website information so they can go look in more detail. Again, we're just trying to give them an idea of that it's a, you know, that it's a lovely place near some, you know, it's a great quality of living and all that kind of stuff here. Um, universities and all that. Okay, so we're good with that. Um, and we also give them information, or websites, so they go give them information. The last paragraph is just about how to contact us for information. So with, with, um, with the addition of the application deadline, I think it sounds like we're good with this uh, from everybody, what everybody said. So Mr. Chairman, if we could get that approved, that would be great. Do I hear a motion that we uh, approve the uh, application guideline? Second. Is there a second? Moved and seconded that we approve this uh, application guideline as presented by Allison. Uh, all in favor, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, the next document is places that we advertise. Years ago, when I was in private law practice and I did superintendent searches, we advertised in local papers, but that didn't really reach the target audience and it was very expensive. Um, that would be uh, 750 if this was like 15 years ago, $750 for a couple of days in a local newspaper where you may have one or two people in your community that would be really interested or qualified. With the web now with the, and the internet, we're able to use a lot of free uh, advertising to really cut down the cost. Um, we send a document, we send a, a copy of the advertisement to every school district, every superintendent in the state gets his own personal email from through DPI. We also send it to all the personnel directors and ask them to post it on the, web, on the bulletin boards in their districts. We also um, blanket the nearby states. We put it on our website, which is a place folks, uh, we encourage folks to go look, even uh, all the districts post on our website. Um, we use the DPI, we, we have a group of 36 national um, nationally, 36 state school board associations that, uh, that have an affiliation that we're a part of that we work to advertise together to. And we also have a database of candidates, which I'm going to talk to you about in a minute, which is that ProMatch survey I gave you when we sent you all. Um, so we believe most of it's free, but we do recommend one paid place, which is really not very much, especially for 30 days, is $525. And again, the way um, our arrangements work with y'all is we have a flat fee of $15,000 plus any approved expenses, so we would need approval of that. But we think it's a very minimal expense, uh, and we believe it reaches across the country. In our experience, we have lots of candidates from all across the country that respond to that website, um, and so we think that's sufficient in addition to the pool. So we would like approval of the 30 days given our more limited time. Alex, uh, in the American Association
Um, because that's what all the administrators are members of. It's their big national organization, just like the National School Boards Association is for school board members. We have had, using that one source, um, we have had um, people apply from all over the country, from other countries, like Americans that were working abroad in American schools. Um, we feel like it really reaches the, the biggest audience of all of them. I mean, we could, we could advertise in five different places that are trade publications, but this we think is the most effective. And the most cost effective, this one. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Do we need 30 days or do we need to go ahead and pay that extra two hundred and rent for 10 more days? I think it's sufficient probably to do the 30 because by the time you get through the 30, it's going to be close to the deadline and people who are just hearing about it probably wouldn't have time to complete the application. So I think that would be sufficient. And as I said, we're going to advertise it through a national network as well. So, so are you recommending the 30 days or the 60 days? 30. That's the reason I said probably good. Are we, are, we, are we pushing this deadline too quick? Well, uh, there's a couple of things that you do need to take into account. Everyone else in this country is looking about this time, so you want to stay as much ahead of it. So the, the reason to push the deadline is a little tighter is to, to stay ahead of some of the other districts that are looking as well, because you, want to, you don't want to compete for the same great candidates. So that's a reason to, to tighten it up a little bit. I think we'll be all right. I think you'll be fine. Um, and let me say, I said this, I think, the other day, but I want to repeat it in case I didn't say it. Um, we're here till you're happy, and if you're not finding who you want in the pool, then we will talk about getting some additional candidates. So um, we're here until you're satisfied you have a great person to lead your school district. Okay? So if, if for some reason we don't get those up, we will go find you some additional candidates. We may have become aware of in the meantime. Okay? So are we okay with that? We need approval. That's, uh, I think the motion we approve the 30 days for 525. Is there a second? Second. The motion second is that we approve the uh, uh, 30 days for $525 by inference of the rest of the recommendation on this sheet. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, um, the next document is the application form itself. Um, most of this is routine information that you want to know about your candidates, and I'm going to go through this very quickly, but there are two places where the board needs to make some choices about what it wants to ask. Remember the purpose of this document. It is to get information that allows you to screen the candidates about, and to know enough information that, uh, that you can decide whether you're interested in interviewing them or not. So think about that. You're not going to ask you're not going to be able to ask every question you might have, but you want to think about what's most important to you to ask so that you can say interested, not interested, okay? So um, the first page is just an introduction. The second page um, is uh, just personal information and licensure information. The third page is employment history, routine stuff. We don't need to, we don't need to talk about that. Page four is where we would need the board to make some decisions about what you want to know about these candidates. Um, we think that 12 is too many questions to ask, but we would suggest you ask between four or six topics for them to describe their experience. This is the experiential issue. Accomplishments or experiences you've had in areas that are important to the board. So with that, um, we'd like to have the board discuss what it thinks are the most important four to six. Um, or if there's other areas that are not listed here, but we tried to list the main ones. What are you most worried about, you know, in the future? What do you want to see as a superintendent um, as a screening tool? So you want us to decide right now? Mm -hmm. Thank you. you want to take a minute to look down and uh, go ahead? Well, Mr. Chair, I was going to say, I think that number two is not, of course, going to be very important. Financial planning and budgets, yeah, this is the day and age. Um, most people, in these days are agreed with that being a critical issue. Um, so number two, everybody agree with that? I think the first one. Educational leadership. That's kind of the crux of what we do here. I think the third one. I, I already had the third one, Chair. I went to Yale yeah. and I thought my sixth. Okay. Personnel relations uh, and, and performance evaluations. Either number four or five. 
read the date. Also, right. 10 11 now. I have to. Ten, eleven, 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 two. 11 and 1 are related, are related directly to the instruction. We uh, could um, um, just the instruction. Yeah. We could take number 11 and incorporate that into number 1 and have an instructional, uh, just an instructional phrase there. Is that okay? So basically, including the use, so add on the end, including the use of instructional technology and other media. So yeah, we'll do that. Right. It's kind of cheating, but it works. Okay. okay. So add like number 11 to number 1. So. I like number 12, but, but I would be willing to acquiesce to some of the others if we have to prioritize up to 6. I thought that they covered 12 in a, in a more general way. Uh, the community relations, which would include all sorts of diverse populations. I, I like the way it was worded better, uh, but it also incorporates the idea that it was a number of so I like eight. Another uh, option would be to do the same thing we did with 1 and 11 and just combine 8 and 12 and say, including success in working with diverse populations. Is everyone okay with that idea? I, I guess one of the reasons I like number 5 along superintendent can't do anything alone. I mean, shouldn't have to do everything alone. I guess a better way to say it. And, and the, you know, needs to be able to, to build a team starting, you know, close up and going all the way, ripping all the way out. And going along with number five's planning is the planning of number 10. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I would suggest five and 10 together before, I don't know about combining, but Okay, so we can combine those two. So we're just going to get them all in here. We're just going to combine them, right? <laughs> That's fine. It's not as intimidating to look at a set of five questions as it is to a set of 12. So. What about our scoring? Uh, a person, uh, how they done it, their scoring, how their relationship with, uh, with their other schools, uh, with their teachers, their principals, and um, I think that's probably covered in personnel relations, including performance evaluation. Is that what you're talking about, performance evaluations? Um, or test scores? I think test scores would probably be included in number one, including educational leadership. And the uh, person may have been number three, then we'll cover the other Yeah, I think so. I think that would. Um, remember that you'll get an opportunity to ask questions during the interviews, too. So if, if you want more details, if they don't give you enough in the application, you can always follow up on specific things with that they had asked or that they had provided to you. I think that, so we've got one, two, three. Uh, we have 11 combined with one. We have two, three, five and 10 combined, eight by itself. And then we're going to, um, actually eight, and we have um, diverse populations added on to the end of eight. So we've got most of it. Okay? Can you repeat those again? We have one, but well, that's kind of complicated, but one with number 11 added in about instructional technology. Number two, which is budgets. Number three, which is personnel relations, including performance evaluations. Um, number five and number 10 are gonna be combined because those are planning and organization. Um, and then number eight and number 12 are combined to talk about community, community relations, et cetera, including working with diverse populations. I think that makes everybody happy who spoke up. Does it satisfy everybody's needs? Satisfy All right. Again, this is a screening tool. You'll be able to ask lots of additional questions if you want more specifics uh, during the interviews. But are, are candidates asked to limit the, the, the length of their answers, or just leave that open to the candidates? Um, we can suggest they. Um, they say we say please describe briefly any accomplishments here. Um, so when I do get calls from candidates occasionally, and they say, "What does briefly mean?" and I say, "A paragraph." Okay. If you would prefer, prefer to be more specific, I have. No problem with that. I mean, no, I just don't read five really copies of War and Peace. You know? <laughs> well, some people are enthusiastic in giving a lot of information. Um, I think part of what you're evaluating in the candidates is can they be succinct and direct in their answers, both here and in the interviews. I mean, you have sometimes where you have people running on, and I've had board members come out of interviews going, oh, can you imagine listening to that person in a board meeting? You know, they, just, they can't summarize what they say. So. Um, I think that um, that's part of what you're evaluating them on, is whether they can express their ideas well. Yes? Your guess is going to be private. 
how are we going to find out some of these uh, things that we're asking here when we uh, we don't we don't do we get that information from that other school district? What, well, what we will do, and I, this is good. I was going to say this at the end of this, but okay. what we do when we send you the information, and these, those are good questions. What we do when we send you the applications, we also um, uh, get an authorization from them to do an internet search. So we pull down information that's available publicly, and we pull the test scores from those districts, and we submit those to you with the applications. So it's not just what they submit to you, but also that information, how their test scores are in their current districts, where they're working, um, and the background check information. And we also um, we, have, we include an experience chart that allows you to kind of see who's who that will allow you to screen them. And that also goes along how they got along with their people, their teachers, their principal. That, that more specificity would come when you're doing reference checking, which is usually between the first interview and the second interview. So um, once you narrow it down to about three people, because that's a very detailed process, and we can talk about doing that and how the board wants to go about that, we have a very detailed form, and we most of the time we do the reference checking and present the same information to the board if that's how the board wants to do it. We can do some conference call information, but it's very important that the board all know the same information um, so that you get it as a board, as opposed to people going out and doing their own independent investigations. Because what's, what's going to keep the board together and make you feel like you uh, all have the same information and that you're all privy to the same information is if you all get the same information at the same time. So we'll work with you on that, but um, we want to make sure you have as much information as you can and you need about the candidates. And if there's specific questions, to back to your question, if there are specific things that, that the board is interested in pursuing, like relationships with employees, we can add that to our interview, um, our interview questionnaire when we check references for you. So um, well that, well, when we get there, we'll, we'll talk about that. And there may be specific things about specific candidates you want us to follow up on, and we'll, we won't know that till we get there and we see who we have. But it's all, that's all confidential, but it's important, very, very important. Um, so, okay, so we are done with um, page four. Page five, yes? If I could, I'm so sorry. There was um, a piece on page four that I, I would like to, I'm a little um, hesitant to just say, please describe briefly. Um, because I feel like that term is broad, of course, and I do know we want to keep it as brief as I guess possible, but when you combine the question one and eleven, that question is almost a paragraph long in itself. Yeah. And for them to respond in just a mere paragraph is going to be tough. I would that we maybe try to consider a word limit or something, maybe 250 words or something, maybe that's too many, I'm just throwing an example on that. But when you just say a paragraph, it's going to be really hard. Well, I think briefly is broad enough so that it's, so it, gives it gives them the kind of the discretion okay. to say, I really need to add some more here, and I may want to make this one longer than I make the rest okay. of them, because that's more meaningful. And in your experience, they do get a chance to answer those, um, I guess, as completely as possible. Yeah. They don't do a little tight. I think when you say briefly, it allows them the discretion to say, what, what I want to be thorough, but I also want to be respectful of the fact that I need to be brief, and see how they manage that. But that's a, it, that's a, how would they manage that? Yeah. Okay? You comfortable with that then? Okay. All right. Educational backgrounds, the next page, that's just standard. You know, where'd you go to school, what activities you've been involved in. The next place where the board needs to make some choices are um, on page, is on page six. And again, these are questions that you want them to tell you about. Uh, not what they've done, but why they're interested in coming to your district, what they could do for you to raise achievement levels, uh, including close, helping close achievement gaps, why do you, you know, what experiences do you have, sell yourself to us, so it's a very different, it's, it's not what you did, it's what are you going to do. And so that's a different kind of approach here. And we suggest maybe three or four of these, these questions or similar questions. Um, and again, we'd like to, whatever the board thinks it wants to know, in order to screen the applicants would be what we would be doing here. So, the same thing. Is there anything in particular that folks feel strongly about? I like number three. Why do you think you're qualified to be our next superintendent? What do you have? What skills do you have? Sell yourself. That is that one. I'll have number two. Number two. What would you do to raise student achievement? Back to the crux issue. Here. And help close achievement gaps. That actually invites them to look at your scores and to think about what they can do for you. Anything else? Uh, number 10. How do the boards and superintendents' roles complement and respect and um, support each other? So, okay. Board-superintendent relations, that's a big issue too. 
I think number one there is when we have typical everybody's done anyhow. Somebody will find that. Yeah. Well, or could we ask that when they interview them? Rather than we'll do it. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see their face when you ask that. <laughs> 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 that's a good, good point. Okay. That's all right. In your view, the difference between question nine and ten. They're, they're similar. Um, they're this, the same topic. It's just um, the relationship, how do you view the relationship or how the versus how they complement each other and support each other. It's just worded in a different way. No, no, I, I just, but I was looking at I wasn't real sure of the difference between question it's nine not. and question ten. There's I thought one of them would be on Some Some boards. I'm happy with ten of them. It's the same idea, basically. How do you, what do you think the board's role is in versus your role? Um, Number six. Number six is please describe your leadership style. Are we okay with that? That will get us to four questions. Are we okay with those as screening tools? Those questions are two, three, six, and ten. Yes. Okay. Anything else on this form? The next page is just give us references. Let me explain a little bit about that. We ask people to give us references. Sometimes people submit reference letters from people, which is fine. We actually encourage that if they want to do that. Um, but we don't contact references until we get permission from the candidates so that they can talk to the people that have, they've listed as references to let them know they've applied. As you know, you may get, as you did the last time, get experienced superintendents. And it's very important to them that they be able to give it a, get a chance to tell their boards that they're looking for another position before they get a call from me or, or someone else. So it's a matter of respect. So we don't contact references and we tell them we don't until we call and say, now we need to check your references. And then we give them a few days to talk to their, their, their people. Now the other thing about checking references is we do not believe in sticking with the references only that are given. We will tell them who we need to talk to. We will say we need to talk to these people. We, need to, we almost always talk to the board attorney. If it's an assistant superintendent, we'll need to talk to the superintendent. We'll try to talk to the board chair if that's possible. Um, so we will, but when we will also talk to other people. If they, if they have only been in a position a couple of years, we'll go back and do that for the people that they worked for several years ago. So um, we, we, we need to, we are very thorough at this stage. That's one of the things that really distinguishes our service. We're very, very careful to get you all the information you need um, and, and want about people's experience um, and their work history. Um, but, but we don't do that, we don't recommend you do that until after the first interview is done and you've narrowed it down to about three. It's a very lengthy process and very intrusive on their current work situation. Um, and again, it's not public that they've applied and we, we, the law says we can't release their names and it's really, really critical you not release their names because it's, as I said, it's a criminal offense but it also means it hurts them in their jobs. Um, we had one person that in a search before I started doing this for the School Board Association where his employee was a, a, a current superintendent and his employer discovered that he was looking and he went home, uh, got out into the paper that he was a candidate and he got he lost his job. So it's real, this is critical for the candidates, absolutely critical. They have to have confidence that this will be confidential. Yes. And I guess likewise, because we're going to know who these people are, Say we know somebody, just somebody in the community or another board member in the county or school system where they're from. It's important for us not to even just start asking nosy little questions. Yeah, about I think it's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, what do you think of your superintendent or your yeah. assistant? I would be very, you're right. I think what, one of the things is, it, and I think it's important to the integrity of this process when the board's trust for each other, that you will all say, we would like, as a board, we would like this information. Um, we will go get it for you, or we, and we, instead of you doing your own exploration, it's kind of the same thing as doing your own investigations when, when there's issues with staff. Um, we're here to help you facilitate that. Yes? I, I don't want to interrupt you, keep on going. I was just going to ask you, once you contact these references, right. And you get information from them. How do you get that done? Are they a list of questions? That we you have a lengthy form that usually takes us about an hour per reference. I mean, we wear we wear out the candidates when they do this lengthy application form, and we wear out the references when we talk to them. 
Um, but we will go over that reference form with you and make sure it's going to ask the questions because you had raised an issue about something specific about um, interactions with uh, staff. I think, believe we have a question on our standard form, but if there's anything else you want to add to that, we'll go over that with you before we start doing that. So I, I'm assuming, Allison, that when I, I received that packet, that uh, Kathy should not be out calling the references. No. No. And, we, and as a matter of fact, we have promised the candidates their references will not be contacted, and no one will be contacted until we tell them we need to do that. And not you want it when you say we, not us. We. we, we do. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, it's, it, it's, so it would be a violation of my promise if y'all started making phone calls. Right, that's what we're paying you to do. Right. And then you will come back and report to us right. all at the same time. And one of the things that, you, that I offer to you all is we have every school board in North Carolina that's a member of our association, and I know those people. And they will be honest with me where they might not be honest with someone they don't know. Same with other states. We're a member of 36 other state school boards associations. And that, that do the same thing. We have an affiliation and we talk to each other about, about references. Um, and they will be honest with me. Um, we also, as you all know, I'm chair of the National Council of School Attorneys this year. I have national contacts with other school board members because I'm also an ex officio member of the National School Boards Association Board of Director, Board of Directors. So I have, I have, that's what I offer you all in part is those contacts where I can call people up and say, you know, when I did this for your board, you expected me to get good information. You need to be respectful of the fact that I need good information for this group of people. So that, that's part of what I can do for you. I, I, I can vouch <laughs> because I got a call from someone on Allison's staff about a former employee. And it was not a, do you recommend this person? It, it, was, it was a lengthy, but I mean, I thought it was going to be pretty short and sweet, but I was on the phone for, for quite a while. And it was, it was very thorough reference check. And, uh, and, and I, want, I want the board to feel comfortable in that process and make sure that all the questions that, because you had raised one specifically, um, that you, all the questions you feel need to be asked are, are, are going to be asked. But we can talk about that when we get to the point of checking references. And it may matter who you have, what questions you ask. So, um, so that's, that's a conversation for down the road, but just be aware that it's really important. You know, city superintendents especially are very reluctant to, and many will not apply if they think their names will get out. And that's why we, we emphasize that. Um, some boards talk about you know, making the names public, but you can't do that without the candidate's permission, and you will lose your, usually your most experienced candidates if you insist on that. So most boards that we work with um, have found that they really get better candidates if they, um, if they preserve the, the legal confidentiality folks are entitled to. And we do better in this state, in terms of numbers and quality of applicants, then a lot of my, our, our sister states that do more public, that have more laws that are different and do more public search, um, we find that we get candidates that don't apply as far. I'm just, I'm just emphasizing that because I don't want you to lose good people um, by, you know, by having things out in public. Okay. Anything else on this application for the rest is just standard. Uh, criminal inf credit information and the releases for us to do the things that we told you we would do. Um, so are we okay with those items as selected and everything else on here? Um, and if so, um, it would be helpful to get that application approved with the selections that the board made. Do you need a motion, Mr. Chairman, to approve the application? I move that we approve the application as well. we have is some sample surveys. And I believe we did surveys for y'all last time. Um, we have two different sets of surveys. There are four, actually four surveys in your materials. One set is green and yellow, and the other set is pink and beige. They are the same substantive questions, but one is for st in each set. So the pink and, I mean, sorry, the green and yellow are the same survey except one is for staff and one is for community. And the reason we recommend you do that is because it's very interesting to see the different concerns of your staff and community. Now, as we talked about, the law in North Carolina is that information about personnel who applies for jobs is confidential. 
So it's very um, helpful and, and important to get information from your community about their concerns. And what we found is that an online survey such as this allows people to take this in the comfort of their own homes uh, anonymously. Not con this information will be redacted and that will be public what folks say, except about specific individuals. So it will be a public report of, out of the survey, but it's anonymous in terms of who actually fills it out. Okay? So that gives people a lot more comfort than coming to a public board meeting. Some people are comfortable doing that, some aren't. Some people don't have time to come to a board meeting when anyway. they're trying to speak, but they can take a survey online. Um, so um, we have two sets of surveys because they're different. The, the green and yellow is a more simple survey that asks people to identify what they think are the most important characteristics of a superintendent. And again, one's for staff and one's the substantive questions are the same, and we think that's helpful because then you can compare them. Uh, item number 25, though, is an item that allows people to type in what their other comments are. So if well, their concerns are not addressed in the surveys, then people can type in their concerns. Um, one, I, I was giving an example of a survey I had once where po a lot of folks typed in that we think the year-round school, there's only one in the county, is getting special treatment, is getting special resources, and it's creating resentment in the other schools. Nothing that we served out, but it was a very prevalent comment. And it let the board know that there were some serious concerns about that issue, and they wanted the superintendent. They wanted the new superintendent to be more equitable in how resources were distributed. So you could type those comments in there, and there would be an opportunity to, for you to say what you thought was important. Um, this is a similar survey. You will probably get more responses. The yellow, I mean, sorry, the, um, the pink and beige <coughs> copies is a more complex and nuanced survey um, that has questions, you know, such as please select the five most significant strengths of the of the school system. In this case, it was the Person County Schools. Um, please rate what you think is the most important or the most important thing. So it's a more nuanced survey in terms of the results, but it's more complicated for people to fill out. So we, we offer these to you as two examples of things that you can do um, if you're interested in surveying your community and your staff. Again, the substantive questions are the same and there's an opportunity to write in comments on this one as well. So um, we do think it's helpful to do um, for your, and, and at this point, remember, this is not a scientific survey. This is for people who want an opportunity to say to the board what they think about the need for the characteristics they would like to see in a new superintendent that would concern I personally took a survey today. It was like this. Mm -hmm. And the time I was at the end, I thought it could have been a whole lot simpler. So just from my perspective today, um, I like the simple because I think that it really asks you the same questions, but people are not in the plan because it says at the start of it, it's going to take about 20 minutes. And it took me a bit of 25 because I was yeah. That's really a task. And it's something that would be much simpler, I think. If people are more apt to finish it. Because if I get started and I'm, I, I don't see the end, I may not finish it. And we, it doesn't matter which survey we use, there will always be some people who start and don't finish. We'll always have a few people. It doesn't matter which one. We see that every time. So just be prepared for that. So, do we make these available to the people? Uh, uh, how, how, what, how do you recommend for us to get these to these people? Well, we will, we will work with your staff. Scott will be in touch with your folks here. And, uh, and they will work with their PR folks to get the word out, to work with the newspapers to get the word out, to provide, we will provide a link on your website so people can go to your website. And it will look like it's on your website, except it will be using our We have a service we contract with. It's called First Survey Monkey. And, and, but we'll start on your website, you'll take the survey and dump you right back in your website and it'll look like it's on your website, but it'll actually be in your website. So um, we will advertise it. Um, we can provide, uh, we, the board system can provide paper copies available for folks in the schools if they want to. I don't recommend that you send it home to the kids because then the kids will fill it out and they'll feel like they have. Some, some, we had one district where the kids were told they had to fill it out and we got a lot of um, <laughs> not happy comments about though, that experience and some very sarcastic. Um, so, you know, I think the people who want an opportunity to take it should be given an opportunity and we can have copies available and it's certainly clearly on the website, should be advertised. If you have a connected, I don't know if you have a connected to notify parents, you can let them know 
that way. Um, any, you know, I, I would really encourage the newspapers to run it. It's something they can do to help you, um, let you let them advertise that the survey is available and the board is interested in hearing your comments. Um, so uh, the other, the staff one is easy because you have your internal communication system that you can just you can just put out there. And we don't have, we don't recommend that be on the website. People will take that who are, who are not staff. So we can control that one a lot better and make sure we reach everybody. But we'll work with your PR people in your school district and get that. Well, I agree with you. I've taken surveys like that, and you kind of lose your interest in when you start answering this. What's more likely, less likely, or likely, or more likely? That's the one I answered this morning. I was like, having to read the question again, and it's. People lose their self interest. I will say most of our boards choose this, this shorter survey, but some have wanted a more complex survey, but they do get less. <laughs> I think some just are interested in giving people more. I mean, you know, th this, yeah, sometimes people say about the survey, well, all of these are really important. Well, that's, I mean, but people can can make them based on these. I'll be honest, I like some of the questions in this one, but I agree. The simpler, the, the better, I think. Well, I, I do as well, but, but I'm not sure that the questions in, in the shorter one are going to tell us anything. I mean, some of the questions are, are so obvious, like, like one of them is, is, do you think the superintendent should understand school finances? Well, who's going to say no? You know, well, everybody's going to say that. And one of the questions is, does a, do you want the superintendent to communicate well? Well, of course we want so, so it's those kind. This one was longer, which, which troubled me, but after we got past the part where they were uh, you know, selecting your top five and all that, then you got into the section like this, which was like the same I would, I would suggest that we use the, the Pearson one, but stop when you get over here because of these questions, sort of come back to the Sampson ones, you want a superintendent that's smart. You know, I, th I think that that's, when I've taken a survey that I don't like, when I feel like yeah, I'm getting a, a repetitive question. That's what I saw. Okay, and then that's what I, the one I took today, uh, which I thought was important and I needed to do it. But I felt like that it was repetitive. I thought I've already answered that question somewhere back here. Uh, but I did want to get down to the end where I could make my comments, so that's why I stayed with the survey. So where where are you suggesting we stop the, the uh, use that person well, and, and, and so, the Samson one, you know, when, when I looked at that, every one of these were basically characteristics that you want to superintendents and my, my sense was that everybody was gonna put down all this stuff was important. Well, or it went, but distinguish between most important, yeah. important, very important, least important. You know, I mean, they're all interesting, interesting things. But what is most important to you? I mean, it doesn't matter. You just and, and that's what the Pearson one did that I liked because you you were required to rank that, that this was most important, this is second most important, this is third most important. So you like going through I like item Pearson six up through where it says number five traits. Yeah. That's number six. Number six. Yeah. So areas of skill or expertise and experience and qualifications, you would rank those. And then significant strengths of the, yeah. and do you want significant strengths of the Cleveland County Schools? Because that's number three there. Okay, we're going kind of backwards. So let's start at the beginning of the Person County Survey. Um, the first thing is select all that apply to you. That's just demographic information. And if you have children here, then the significant strengths of the Cleveland County School System would be the next question. Do you like that? Kathy's giving her opinion. That's fine. I, I like I, this one because, because it ranked, but it was too long. So I, I took the long one and the short one. That's what I was saying. And I have no problem in the way. I just don't like long. I think okay. people don't finish. You said go through traits or up two traits? Go, go through traits. The first one, two, three, four. The first four pages of the questions. And the, and the last, or the fourth page of that says traits, and it asks, it's got certain traits of the, of the superintendent, it's like about 12 or 15, and the person taking the survey is asked to rank the five most important. So you don't go through and say, well, they're all important. Which okay. one of the five most important? So you like to basically to go through traits and take out some or seven characteristics, basically. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, that's several pages, so take that out. And then, um, and then we just leave the comment section at the end. I think you might have to 
It shortens it significantly, but it, but it does have the ranking feature. Is everybody good with that? I do. Right. Just have a, a, a question for information. Just how do you use and how do you present to us the demographic information or do? We have a we come with a PowerPoint that will demonstrate to you kind of who, where people come from. So it's it's a pie chart. And it'll be like, you know, are people, do people have children in the school system? If so, at what level? High school, middle school, whatever. Um, so that kind of information. The, um, we, it'll, be, it'll be a report that the computer kicks out, and then we'll come to you with a shortened version of the report. So. But, you, but you aren't able to differentiate uh, X number of preschool parents felt this way. Uh, we, 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 we normally just do elementary. No, we don't. We don't. Yes, no, we don't do that. We don't say you had these elementary parents and of those parents. We don't break it down to that level. But we do let you know who who responded. How many elementary parents? How many high school parents? So this basically is, is tell us who responded, not how. Not, not what. what yeah. Not how this yeah, that would just be so complicated. I, 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 I agree. I, yeah. I, I, I was just trying. Yeah, I think you want to see that you got a cross section of people that responded, and then just for sort of a general, um, you know, characteristics. And I will tell you, I mean, as we've gone through these, just so you know, um, this person survey is an example. This was one that the person board had, we took from a more complicated survey we had, and they made it their own. So you've just done that too. You know, this is your survey. They don't have a copyright. No. <laughs> It's all, you know, anything y'all do is public in public domain, so anyway. Um, so, okay, so we're going to shorten this so that we include up through the traits and leave the community, I mean, leave the comments at the end, and um, that'll be your survey. As you see on your timeline, we will get that out as quickly as possible and work with your staff as quickly as possible to start advertising that um, with your community. Um, and then also, you know, if you want to have, uh, you, have, you have, by law, public comment sessions at your regular board meetings if people want to come speak, there's that opportunity. Some boards choose to, to do additional forums, but my experience is if you make this available, very few people will come to the forum because there's another opportunity that's easier for them. Um, that doesn't mean that... In your experience, that if you do these... If you do these, then you don't probably need much time for public comment beyond what you have at your regular board meeting which is by law you have to have a public comment session. Because um, um, our experience is like, we just did the Pitt County search uh, last summer. And um, they uh, had set four or five community forums and the whole board got together and maybe two or three people came to each one. So this is, this is so much easier for people to do and it's anonymous and it's more detailed than what they can say in three minutes to the board. And so, but you do still have that opportunity when you have your public comment session. So, I mean, again, it's up to the board whether you want to set a separate session, but my experience is um, generally few people will come. And the ones that really want to come, there is an opportunity at your regular board meetings. Now, one of the things that we do have is, um, in the timeline, we, once the surveys are closed, we'll come back and make a report at a regular board meeting. So that it's public and your, your uh, staff will be here and the community that wants to be here and the, press so they will hear what the summary is of the surveys and also at that time there's generally an opportunity for those people that want to speak at that meeting to say a few things before the board um, decides on its profile and at that meeting we ask the board to be ready to uh, have looked at the survey information which you'll get ahead of time and and help us or work with us to develop a profile of what you think is the most important based on and informed by your community and staff input. So we'll, we'll have a conversation about for the board about what you think is important. We'll take that information and do rating sheets and, and help develop questions that may be of interest to you based on your criteria. So we talked about developing a profile. The advertisement is general, but that's when you develop a profile after you get survey information so you know what your community and staff are concerned about as well. Okay, is everybody comfortable with that process? Mr. Chairman, I do have two questions. Somewhere in here, I don't know if we're ready, but Spanish versions of, of the survey, is that just a 
click on, on the survey and it turns it into Spanish? Is it that no, simple? no. We we have we develop we we have developed Spanish versions of these surveys that we'd be happy to make available to you as well. We would probably need to work with your staff to make sure it's the appropriate dialect for for folks in your area. Um, the, the work, you have some Spanish speaking folks in school district. I see your superintendent understands that that's something they're used to doing. And, and my second question was tell me how it would work for citizens who do not have computers at home. You said paper copies? We can provide paper copies or let people know that they're, I mean, if, you, if your school system, if your staff doesn't mind having some copies available at the different schools, that's probably the best place for people. Everybody has a school in their neighborhood. Um, so they could drop in and get a paper copy there, drop it in a box. And then send it to us, and we will input the data in our office. You key the data. We key the data. Um, yeah, and there are some. Yeah, there's some protections. Okay. By, by the way, if people use the same computer, that can you use a URL once to take the survey, so people can't load up 25 times. Yeah, you know, even though it's not a scientific survey, it's useful to have not the same person responding. To so if we have paper copies at, at a school or schools, then we should have a Dropbox. Yes. There at the schools so that they can. Yes, and we would ask your staff to collect it however they normally do. Get it to us, have your board assistant maybe send it to, send any, any copies to us. So, so you will work with our staff yes. to timeline that too so that you would have the material there to accumulate. Yes. Time for you. Yes, and we, we, we have had Spanish surveys in many districts. We generally don't get a lot of Spanish comments, but I mean, we're happy to do that. We have, a, we have them already translated. Well, is, is the Spanish form only, is that the only one you're recommending be the No, 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 all of it, yeah. Right. Okay. But I'm just saying, the Spanish one is probably online, unless you, I mean, but you can make copies of that too. We can easily provide you hard copies of both. Um, so if I'm hearing you think that it's important for your community, we're happy to do. Um, do we need a motion to approve this? I think so. The survey as modified, um, as described. And this is with regard to survey. Right. Well, I must be pleasurable. Mr. Chair, I move that we modify the Pearson County survey to end uh, uh, after the section on traits and include the open ended question and do that with the survey. I'll second the progress motion. Any further discussion? How long a period do we have to get these surveys done? Ten weeks, it looks like. Well, from tomorrow, it's about yeah. We'll get we'll get that out tomorrow. I mean, we're 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 fast. No. Yeah. <laughs> so when we have a board meeting, and we can have some of these hard copies to give the people to pass out. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You can you can do that at a board meeting and have them available in the back of the room. I would say they could just be out there at, at Anita's desk. Yeah, and, um, and when, when we did Winston-Salem, they had some community forums and they had them available for people, and some people just filled them out right then. So if people come to your board meeting, they can fill them out right then. Generally, we don't do the staff survey written because the staff should also have access, all have access to computers in the schools. So we don't want to confuse them because if you put staff and the community out, some people will fill out them online and that just sort of um, skews the results. So we just, the community survey would be one that we would distribute. <laughs> Um, but we have um, about a month to do the surveys, which is about, if you do much longer, people just kind of forget about it. Um, it's always great to have a deadline because then people will say, oh, I really need to get to that. And, but, you know, so that, that should be plenty of time. I mean, if school's in session, we shouldn't have an issue. Okay, uh, I just wanted to point out, you had asked the other day about a booklet that we had um, put together at the School Board Association. It's in the left-hand side of your materials. It's just a summary of the law and the process that we've talked about today. But there's, I just wanted to, I had said that I would bring them, and I, I did. I had them ready to bring last week, and I didn't make it in person. Um, the last document that I need you all to look at, and this is not in the other packets, but just the board packets, is the, the PRO Act survey that um, just basically is, allows you to plug into the national database I referred to. The Michigan School Boards Association houses for all of us a database of candidates who are interested in being superintendents across the country. When we get candidates, we ask them to fill out the surveys. What it does is, some of this is just who your school system is. Some of it is what you're interested in. Um, what this does is it identifies a profile for you as a school board 
about what candidates you're interested in looking at, what your salary range is generally, and that would be what your current superintendent is making or about there, um, what experience you prefer. We will take all of your individual answers and we will combine them and get a district profile, which we will also present when we present the surveys. In the meantime, we will plug your data into this national database and it will kick out a list of people who meet the profile that the board has identified, your, com your combined profile, so that it allows us to reach a more national database and it allows us to get candidates more quickly to answer your questions about uh, limiting the time. It allows us to get the word out to potential candidates more directly and quickly by saying these people uh, are interested in a district of your size, they're interested in your area, they have the criteria you're looking for. Um, and we'll kick out an email to them and say, you've been identified as a match for this district. We'd ask if you call us and talk to us about it or uh, look at this district and see if you're interested. It's a recruiting tool, basically. So this, we individually fill out. If you would individually fill it out, we will combine it. We will, the computer will send it off to Michigan, the Michigan folks. They will combine it into a profile that is a conglomeration, not a, not a board decision, but a conglomeration of what you all think and it will kick out um, emails. It's a, it's a recruiting tool, so it's not a precise tool again, but it's a helpful tool to kind of get an idea of what your board as a whole is interested in. How soon do we need to get this back to you? Could you get them to me or to your board assistant before the end of the, or to us or to the board assistant before the end of the week? Scan it a PDF, or just give it to your board assistant, or you know, or um, we don't have it on a version. This is the way that they give it to us. I'm sorry about that. But it's, it's a good question, man. Uh, as you said, district size. We're talking about the size of the school the superintendent to be from. No. We're talking about our district. You're talking about your district size. Some of these are for his and their information, the candidate's information. Some of them is for your information. So you're saying what district size? For, when the candidate fills out the same items. He'll say what district size I'm interested in, but you're saying what district size you are. Okay. Um, salary compensation for the candidate that will be what am I needing in terms of a salary for you all? It'll be what are we generally paying our current superintendent? So that's those are numbers that are kind of fixed for you. But some of these other things are experience preference. That's a preference that you all decide. Um, areas of expertise that you rank. Um, Leadership style, what's important to you, and what specialized skills do you want to see? Again, we can't alter this one, and the, uh, um, the personal characteristics select the six most important ones. We, this is not our survey, and it's not something we can alter because the idea is to match it up with people who are taking the survey on the other side. So this is, again, it's a recruiting tool. It's not an exact science, but it's just a tool. Okay? All right? Uh, could you define a little bit the first page when you're talking about doctorates and underneath specialist plus administrative certification endorsement so forth and then everybody knows doctorate, masters, bachelor and so forth. Maybe I'm just um, um, I think the bottom line right here is that do you need um, at the highest level preferred so if you prefer a doctorate if you're willing to accept someone um, with a master's degree in North Carolina, you have to have an ed specialist degree. Is that six-year degree we were talking about? You can, if you have a doctorate or an ed specialist degree, you can get a license in North Carolina. Um, and that's basically all but the doctorate. The master's is then the next level down, which is no, no not the coursework for, for dissertation. I mean, for a PhD. Okay, so that's what's an ed, an ed specialist degree is the six-year certificate we called in North Carolina forever. Um, it's not a doctorate, it's the, all, the, all, the, all the coursework, but not the dissertation. Okay? Does that help you? Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Um, again, it's not an exact science. We're just trying to get information from you that will help you identify people that you're interested in. Okay? And that, Mr. Chairman, is a gracious plenty for the evening, I think. Before you leave, is there any wish to have a forum or something like that? This is the time, I think, to discuss it or to discuss it after Allison's left to get back to Rob. I got, I got one question. We're asking all about them. What do we tell them about us? 
candidates? Yes. Well, that's part of what this survey is. Um, that's part of what your advertisement is. You know, who you are, you give them websites to kind of go to what you say in your advertisement, what you're looking for. I mean, you know, what your district size is, what your community is like. Um, and then this information is also what the board is looking for. The time that you develop your profile also we talked about is at the meeting when we present the survey information. That information will become, a, that your, your profile will be done publicly so the candidates will get that information also about what the board has developed as its priorities. But we can't, given your time constraints, we can't do that first. We have to really get the advertisement sounds later, but we will do that at a public meeting that will identify that information. Okay, does that answer your questions? Mr. Chair, my initial thought was that we needed to have one or two listening sessions, but what our consultant told us tonight is that her experience has been when we do the surveys, the attendance is for it, the forums or listening sessions or whatever. Uh, she's done this a lot more than, than I have. Uh, I, I, I want to get input from the community, but it, it sounds like her experience is that the best input is, is using the surveys instead of the forms. You, and again, you have your regular board meetings, and you could set a little bit longer time at your next regular board meeting, which will be. We've got at least two in that time. So you could set a, a little bit of extra time aside for that at your regular board meeting, so that you don't have to have another meeting. And those are advertised meetings; people don't know. Really so that would be one way to do it. I, I agree. I, I was thinking the same way. I thought we needed the actual meeting, not listening to Allison, and I've sort of changed. Um, there are two districts that come to mind where we have had, uh, they've had community forums that have been attended, well, um, very well attended. Uh, Winston, I mean, sorry, Winston-Salem was one, um, and they, um, they did advertise and brought in. I think there was a lot of concern in the community about inclusiveness, um, and so that about inclusiveness, about it, um, and so they, those were pretty well attended. Um, the, and again, I think that community valued that, uh, saying it wasn't valuable. Um, the other uh, experience was in Chapel Hill, which is a very small community and tends to be um, very, very um, involved uh, parents, very you know, very geographically close to the city system, um, and a lot of university parents and things like that. So those are the two where we had more involvement. Those are the only two I can think of where we significant um, attendance. The other hundred or so that I've done we've had, where there have been forums, we used to do them as a matter of course when I started doing this, and we've just found that the board meetings themselves, especially since you have regularly scheduled board meetings between now and then, if you could set aside a little time when you're already scheduled, it would not require you to have another separate meeting. And then if people did not want to speak and you only had two or three people, you were still there to do the business that you had to do already. It would not mean the board would have to take another special time. But I think 30 minutes probably in each of the board meetings that you have coming as a, as a maximum time um, would probably solve, would address that need. And that's just my guess. But, and again, 30 minutes is, if you're doing three, three people a minute, that's 10 people. Like the option, as you said earlier, maybe add on to 
the end of a regularly scheduled meeting. Or the beginning, um, you know, come a little early beginning. where people don't, because people, you know, with kids especially, it's hard for them to be out late at night. And I think that would be a healthy thing to do, but um, just letting people know that we do want to hear what you have to say. If they don't take that opportunity, fine. Yeah. But at least we can say that we want you to come, we want you to speak. And if they don't take that opportunity, that's up to them. But I do think it would be healthy to publicize that we want you to come. Absolutely, and I would encourage you to do that. But within the, but since you have regularly scheduled meetings, you can add it on to that. And some people may be planning to come to those meetings already anyway, um, who would like an opportunity to speak. You'll get, I think, better participation if you do do it around a regular meeting. Or That's fine. I, I do. I agree with you on that. But I do think we need to take that opportunity. And maybe um, our public participation rules, I think they, they say that you have to get in there earlier. You have to get with our, you have to sign up for it. Um, I'm just, I'm a believer that we should just exhaust every opportunity. I don't want any criticism to come back on this group because I feel like we all have the mindset. We want them to at least feel like they've been nervous. I and I, I absolutely agree you should offer the opportunity. I'm just saying in the context of a board meeting where you're likely to get better participation and, and people who may be coming in anyway. And we have two over that time span. Yeah. And I do think that's, that's good. And if you find that it's not enough and you have a lot of people coming to the first one who want to speak, then you can always set another opportunity for folks if you feel like you need yeah. I'll agree with Mr. Thurman on that. Uh, we have three of our high schools close to right here, and, and I think the board meeting would work perfect. So that in the upper end of our county, I think we ought to hold one there and give those people the opportunity uh, up in our upper end, which lives quite a bit further away than the Crest High School area, the Shelby area, the Kings Mountain area. Uh, I, I'll go along with Mr. Thurman that we should open the doors up and at least give them a chance. We give them a chance here or there, and and we have one for them up in the upper end of the county. I was just going to say that I don't believe that we should travel uh, to different areas of the county. I do believe that here would be sufficient. Um, you know, I understand what you're saying, and I think that um, that makes a lot of sense in, in many ways, I guess, but I think this is the best form. Um, I don't think we should just go to one part of the county and not the others. I think this is the centralized location. Um, I think, like you said earlier, we have a couple of regularly scheduled, scheduled meetings that are coming up. Um, we'll let the community know, we'll publicize it. Please come and let your voice be heard, and I do like that aspect of it. We don't have to you know, dedicate a special meeting just for that. Uh, discussion. Do we need to have that advertising? I didn't say advertising to start, but would that be a as a as a special advertising paper to say we're having those before had our regular meeting? Would that be uh, something we wanted to do? It costs a little money, but it's a way of doing what we need to say. Well, I don't think we need to pay for an advertisement. I mean, surely Jessica's going to call and try to find out. This is an open meeting, and so the store is probably going to. I'm surprised on her. She's not here tonight, and so. Uh, Northern Press Press is really good about doing an article about yeah. that or, or as part of their public yeah. service saying that the folks are available. I mean, that this is going to be at the upcoming board meeting. So I know your PR people can probably work with the press and get that information out. Um, and, you know, you may want to, um, you could do an, you know, an announcement or do your connect ed to parents if they wanted to um, be told, you know, there's an opportunity for, for coming and talking. So. There are great communication systems that with electronics these days that allow it to get all over the place. Okay. Could we, um, we've got the meeting coming up on this Monday, which I know how quick y'all are in getting the surveys out, but I don't know that, um, I don't know. It depends on your press and how often it's published. Right. Um, I, I guess I'd like to give as many people a chance to to do the survey and get their thoughts out that way to us. Um, and I don't know what our agenda is like for this Monday night yet. How long? I'm not sure exactly what I'm trying to say. I think
think that the March 10th, uh, certainly anybody can say whether, you know, make their comments during our public comments time, um, but I just don't want people to think that this coming Monday night is the only time, and so, you know, there, there, and even the March 24th meeting, even though that's kind of after that March 19th deadline that you have for getting the surveys, and we could still accept public comments. I actually would encourage that to be an opportunity as well, yeah. because there will be a presentation of the survey information. Right, because so. their comments won't be part of your data collection, but it will be part of what we collect um, our own numbers. And so, So what I'm hearing is you definitely want to have some dedicated public comment periods before your board meetings. 
uh, I believe a half an hour before your board meetings start, and for the board meetings you have between now and, and, and including March 24th. So does that mean we need to change the time that we're going for this coming Monday night? Um, I don't think we need to advertise this one as much because yes, I think we need to give, to give, give them an opportunity to right. survey. Well, then we have a hearing yeah. before yeah. this one. Uh, I think I, we need to really designate the March. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, so, is that a motion, Phil? <laughs> if you need that motion. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, our rules say to change the time of the meeting. Uh, do we need a motion, Mr. Kim? March. If Phil's motion is to change the starting time from March 10th and 12th, that's excuse me, 10th and 24th to 6:30 to allow time for public comment, that's second that motion. Okay. Does that mean that the March 10th right now is scheduled for five o'clock? So we'll change it to 6:30. Because it's a work session, so we're saying this takes priority over work session. Well, my real question, I know we, the work, one of the things probably that we need to have, a, they need to discuss the work session, would be this 25% selection for the uh, uh, states will require to do. we need to do that in a work session? Do we have, basically, I have to ask Superintendent, what is our need for a work session? Do we have some things that we really need to sit down in a work session and do rather than? I think he only knows that discussion at the last meeting. We discussed that. But did you get a plan to carry it further? Uh, we can do whatever. The things that we had planned, at least initially, we had heard, had solicited ideas from you all for work session, but the things we had planned to talk about in the work session, uh, very little about the 25%. I think we pretty much know where we're going with that. Uh, we got some preliminary uh, information about your. Uh, Long Pacific plan, that, that project uh, presented to you. We could have a later meeting. That's not, a, that's not a necessarily a work session. I think anything that we need to do, we can do it in a regular meeting unless you all feel otherwise. And that's, that's, that's a good call. And we'll do it you direct us to. But I think we can, the, the important matter that you need to attend here this next month and a half, we can get to you at a regular meeting. So March 10th will become a regular meeting starting. I have another thought before that. Uh, I'm great with this, but I'm thinking about Mr. Harris and his seniors that he meets with. Uh, how, what's your thought on that? If, if we're going to move them up to 6 30 for public comment and we're going to have time to meet with him, and we want them to have to be here that much earlier to, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, they might like to participate, I mean, to listen to the public. <laughs> you said that all like to listen to me, Mr. Chairman. Share it with the plan leaders as well. I mean, I'm Mr. Chairman, I, I don't think with regular schedules, I don't think that's a uh, senior schedule for the 10th meeting because it is a work session. Mm -hmm. So if you prefer to cancel the seniors, you're only doing one meeting for 24. Well, the, the, the 24th is, is when we're scheduled to have North Shelby represented this year. Uh, ordinarily, that's a different sort of interview with, with those children anyway. That's so, right. so we can Are they also the pledge leaders that might do that? Okay. Dr. Hopper is the They are. They might be a tabernacle then. Yeah, that might be a, a neutral night for them to get in and out. Sure, the forum people can 
understand exactly what it is. And how the public participation from 637 does it Form kind of implies back and forth, and it's more question answer, and it's not. Public comment is really interesting. Public comment is probably better. Public comment from 630 to 7. With the same rules of three minutes per comment, and they need to sign up with the Springs prior to the meeting. Now, what if we have more than 10? <laughs> well, some will talk three minutes, some will talk one minute. But, uh, but if they have more, then we'll know how the next meeting to come to. And if we see that we're going to run into a lot, we can schedule another particular time. Yeah, if you, if you find that a lot of people want to come in the first meeting, you don't get to speak, you can schedule a special meeting. Or, or you can, you know, if you have a little flexibility, you can